this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to install Odoo onto a cloud solution. However, to do this, we're going to follow best practices. So we're going to install using Odoo 11.0, and this is the latest current version of Odoo. We're going to install it using Git. Now, the reason this is important is because as up Odoo updates their product, you'll be able to update your product as well if you run the right commands to update it with Git. We're going to use Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. Now, LTS is a long-term service release, which means that for years to come, you're going to have a stable system using 18.04, which is supported by Ubuntu. We're going to use Apache 2. Now, um, Odoo does have its own uh, development WSGI client, and it's called WorkZerg. And it's great for development, but it should not be used in production. Um, that's why we're going to use Apache 2. We're going to be using Python 3.6. And lastly, we're going to be using Postgres 10.0. With this combination, you will have the latest and greatest version of all of the tools that you'll need. You'll have a stable operating system with a stable Odoo installation. And you'll be able to upgrade from there. A quick foreword about myself. My name is Sergio Milanes, and my company is HLX Studios. You can find me here or here. I do custom software development for e-commerce companies. So if you need anything along these lines or more, then I can help you with this. And I'm based out of New York City. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do with this tutorial is we have three files open that you can see. We have the installation instructions. We have the WSGI that I've prepared for you. And we have the uh, configuration file that Apache 2 will need. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start changing these top three variables for the URL, the IP address, and the password. Before focusing on this, we're going to go here to my Linode console, and you can see that I've spun up a new uh, Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. I have here the remote connections, which allows me to see my IPv4 and IPv6 address. I've plugged that into my Cloudflare account, and if we go to odoo.hlx.co, we'll see that Cloudflare is saying that my browser is working and a Cloudflare is working, but the host odoo.hlx.co is not yet working. And that's the whole point. We intend to install it. Um, this tutorial assumes that you know how to point your DNS servers to the appropriate location. I will not cover it because there's a thousand others that do cover it. Uh, it also assumes that you know how to use a cloud solution. Again, I won't cover it because there are many other others that do cover it. All right, so having said that, let's collect our IP address from here. And we already know that the URL is odoo.hlx.co. So for the IP address, if you're using Notepad++, you have the benefit of copying and pasting across many different uh, documents at once. Otherwise, you have to do it manually one by one. So my IP address, replace an all open file, that find replace does happen to all of these. If you don't have Notepad++, be aware that you're going to have to do that manually. And my URL is odoo.hlx.co. And again, replace in all open documents. Now, for your password, this is going to be a database password, and I strongly suggest you make it a good one. For this tutorial, it will not be a very complicated one. Uh, do not follow my lead. Make it a complicated password. OK, so now that we have these, I get to look at this. Great, the password updated here. I get to look at this here. Again, these updated correctly. The IP address, the, um, the URL. So now we go back and we start running some of these commands. For the first one, let's just start with commands here. And we right click. We find this here at localhost. We say that localhost becomes odoo.hlx.co. Control X, Y, enter. Then we go to the host name here. And again, localhost becomes odoo.hlx.co. Now, this should be the latest version, and it just happened. So this, is, this will be a very quick update for me. Uh, depending on when you watch this video, that update may take longer. Now we're going to add an admin user. And we're going to modify it and make it a super user. Then we're going to log in as that user. Then we're going to make the directory. Uh, this directory is used for the logs. OK, having done that, we exit the user. So we should be back in root, no longer in admin. Now we're going to install the Postgres server. Uh, 
after that's done. So we're going to wait for that to finish. But when that's done, we're going to start the Postgres server. And this red error message only means that it's not running. There's no actual issue. It's just down. And then we're going to bring it back. So we're now running the server. We log in as the Postgres user. And we create a user which has the appropriate privileges. Now we log in to the Postgres database with PSQL, and we have to create a Postgres user. Again, this is where the password that you've typed in above will come into place. And again, for that user, we have to give it the right permissions so that it can create databases. Well, amongst other things. We quit the database server, and we exit the um, Postgres user. We navigate to the right directory. You should already have Git. In fact, you will have Git, but I just need to check. Now, you don't need to know how Git works. However, this line in particular is important because it will mean much less downloading time for you. And this line, or this section, will download the latest version of Odoo 11.0. Okay. Next, we're going to install the Python package index. Um, this will allow us to download more repositories down the line. Now, everything that comes, actually this whole thing from here on out, these are all commands that I've had to organize to put them into this order. If run outside of this order, I've had quite a bit of trouble with them. So even though a lot of them could be run in a single or two or three lines, I've divided them. I suggest you keep them divided. And to clarify, when I say keep them divided, I mean run them separately the way that I'm running them in the tutorial now. Um, a lot of these seem like they could be run together, and maybe they could be run together, um, except I ran into quite a few bit of issues when running them outside of this order. Now, for this one in particular, libpng 12.01254, um, it needs to be exactly that version, and that's why I can't use the package manager. I have to explicitly download it, explicitly run it. No such file or... See why not such file or directory. Let's go back. Wget, yes. It's there. Okay, there it is. Um, and now we move on. So, I was saying that it has to be explicitly that version, and we're going to run into the same thing again with wkhtml to pdf. If you don't have the right version, it be, well, first of all, Odoo doesn't work, and second of all, you have to remove it, and it's kind of a mess. So doing it the right way from the start will save you headaches I cannot tell you about. Um, so this downloads it, this depackages it, now we're going to copy the binaries to important directories so that Odoo can see it, and then we remove the install file, and we move on. Now, encoding is another nice little nightmare, and it has to have the same encoding on the database as it does on the server. So now what we're doing is we're going into the database, and we're just going to make sure, first of all, that it's UTF-8, and second of all, that the templates that we have are updated to be UTF-8. So we drop template 1, and then we create the same template again, but with UTF-8 encoding, and more updates. Now, once we've done that, we're going to quit the database server. We're going to exit to this uh, user again. And now we have to fix UTF-8 encoding on the server itself. OK, just, just to pause for appreciation, uh, these were hours and hours and hours of work. So you won't have to deal with this. Now, another key note, uh, I need to access my PostgreSQL server remotely. You may not have to, I do. So I'm gonna show these instructions. If it does not meet something that you need to do or want to do or would like the world to have access to, then definitely do not follow these instructions. Now this is telling the server that I would like to, um, I would like it to answer requests from hosts other than the ones that are local, right? So not local connections. And then this other one, checking the listening ports, is you know, control W, listen. I'm asking it to listen for every IP, not just the local host, not just my internal network, not a small subset of IPs. 
you may need to configure this differently if you want to. This is not essential, but it's something that I need to do. And then I restart PostgreSQL. Now we're going to install more dependencies. And even more dependencies. Okay. Now we have to install Odoo's web dependencies. So first we need the Node Package Manager. With the Node Package Manager, we can start installing two key Node packages. Now, two quick notes. These are not essential. I think that the Python should point to Python 3.6, unless you're dealing with a ton of legacy software, in which case you should rethink your life. Um, and then I also think, well, not I think, this is essential. You should be, you should be at the right um, time zone. Otherwise, all of the information that you have in Odoo will be um, off. So where is New York? Great. Now, next we would install Apache, but before we do that, I just want to test. It should be working. No reason not to, but let's test anyway. So let's go to Odoo. Let's um, Python Odoo bin. Is it not here? Yes. Python. My mistake. Odoo bin. Actually, one more thing, sudo su postgres. Now, Python Odoo bin. Aha, uh -huh. I don't know why this didn't install. sudo pip3 install py2 pdf. Uh, testing my patience here. And now we go back to Postgres, and now again we run it. And let's forget the um, Python command. Let's just run odoo bin. Yeah, all right, so that was the problem. Great. So now we're going to go back over here, and we're going to take this IP address. So even though this is set up, um, it's not being served on that port. So 8069. So now we're testing with WorkZerg. And the IP address with the port 8069 is working perfectly. Now we can move on to installing Apache. Okay, so control C to cancel out of this, and we're going to exit out of the Postgres user. And now we move on with these commands. This will install Apache 2. Then we need the mod whiskey file that works with Python 3. Now we're going to change a configuration file and add server name odoo.hlx.co. Now we're going to prepare the configuration file. Now because we've done all the work, the configuration file is as easy as copy and paste. And now we're going to create symbolic links such that the configuration file is readily available as it should be in the enabled section. Next, we're going to remove the welcome page, which is great, but we don't need it. Now we're going to restart Apache, restart Postgres for good measure. Not necessary, but for good measure. Now we're going to uh, drop in the WSGI file again. WSGI file is already created for you, so all you have to do is copy and paste. Control X, Y, Enter. Great. And one last restart for good measure. Now we go back to our browser and type out odoo.hlx.co. And sure enough, so let's get through the motions here. But at this point, all of the work is already done. We're in the, I'm in the United States, create database. Actually, while that's working, 
I can actually just watch the processor moving. I can watch the processes going. It does take a little bit of time, but if you see that everything is working fine, then waiting is not that big of a deal.